Yeah, we did expect avian flu to reach South Georgia, so it has spread throughout South America. We know that a lot of the species that breed on South Georgia winter around South America, things like brown skewers, giant petrels. So we expected those to be this vector that brings the disease into South Georgia. And that indeed happened in October. So we saw this virus emerge in brown skewers and giant petrels back then. And it's perhaps surprising that penguins have only just been infected in February because these are predatory scavenging species that do frequent the penguin colonies. And penguin colonies are very dense, so you'd expect quite rapid transmission uh, through these colonies. There's no social distancing in penguin colony. It's surprising that they're only just affected, but it's kind of reassuring that there's only been these two small outbreaks. And even at the, uh, the Gen 2 colony in, on Bird Island, where we've seen 38 individuals die, we have had confirmation that was bird flu. No further mortalities have been seen in that same colony. But it doesn't seem to be that this is like a, a runaway virus that's infecting large areas. It's, it's very localized and uh, restricted to a small number of species and sites. Uh, I mean, there's, the, there is cause for concern. So we've seen this virus sweep through Europe and North America, down through South America, and it has caused quite high mortalities including in penguins, which include the African penguin, Humboldt penguins, and Magellanic penguins. So they've experienced significant mass mortalities. We have a long-term monitoring at South Georgia that includes monitoring survival rates, breeding success, uh, monitoring of population sizes as well. So it's one of the best places, probably globally, where we can actually monitor the effects of this disease and actually work out what the additive mortality is above baseline. I mean, penguins are well adapted to their environment, but those adaptations have occurred over millions of years where some of the changes that are happening now are very abrupt. So, you know, the sudden arrival of highly pathogenic avian influenza being one example. There's also climate change, fisheries interactions that are compounding some of, some of the problems that the penguins are experiencing as well. So at the moment, there's, there's no big signs of a problem, but uh, if, if this does, does get worse, obviously it's cause for concern because it's adding another source of mortality to those that already exist. Yeah, so the penguins on South Georgia have very mixed fates in terms of their population and breeding success. So historically, macaroni penguins have declined, but they've stabilized and started to recover. King penguins are increasing after historic hunting. Um, Gentoo penguins, they have fluctuating population sizes. Occasionally we get these breeding failures across the whole island due to lack of food. And when the krill stocks collapse, Gen 2 penguins tend to fail. And chinstrap penguins, there's a small colony, a few small colonies in the northeast of the island, and they've just started to colonize Bird Island in the northwest as well. But it's very a very mixed picture really, but it shows that there is an element of resilience in these populations so they can recover after historic hunting or population declines due to lack of food and with yeah, periodic breeding success can be absorbed by improved survival of the, the birds that remain. So it's difficult to say what impacts birds they will have on them, um, but these episodic mortalities, populations can recover from these.